Hi, this is Mary Michonne from Ben Cell Greenhouse in Toledo, Ohio, and today we're talking about Trade Scantia or Wandering Jew Plant. Okay, so it's again, it's December here in Toledo, Ohio, and I usually do a little bit of a walk around the greenhouse, and this is a time of year that we're always refreshing our plants up, and one of the more popular plants is the Wandering Jew, or often called the inch plant. I know people are politically correct in calling them wandering dudes, that type of thing. Um, it's really a Trinscantia is the plant, the scientific name. And I pulled a couple of ours. Um, we refresh our wandering Jews all the time. It's something that you'll probably have to do in your home as well. So the first thing that I notice when I'm walking through the greenhouse and taking a look at the wandering Jew plants is there is some brown on them and um, they are kind of stretching out a little bit. This is our six inch plant and six inch pot of plants and I do see a lot of brown. Um, normally what happens is people do hang these or they set them up on pedestals and let them drip and if they get really really long the weight of the plant starts to cause the branches to, to collapse closer to the pot and then as they fill out around all of this growth around here is shading the inner side of the plant the, the growth on the inner side and this portion actually was up against a wall it was on a, a plant rack and it was hanging up against the wall and that's why this section is turning brown typically when you see your leaves on this type of plant turning brown that usually means lack of light and it is December so we are starting to get darker around five o'clock in this area and in Toledo Ohio we typically have a lot of dreary days we don't usually have Sun like we do today so it makes your home environment even darker so think about where your wandering Jew plant is or your Transcantia plant is in your house because they normally like a lot of lower light in the winter time when it's dreary and dismal and overcast and not sunny and it's getting darker earlier that's even less light so they tend to need a little bit more light you may have to move your shade loving plants to a more sunny location to stop this from happening so we do not use growth regulators here at our greenhouse we do cuttings we pinch we trim all of that i don't like to use a lot of chemicals on our plant material because then when you get it home, it acts differently than when it did at the greenhouse. And I want the transition of our plants to your home to go a little bit smoother. So what we usually do is I take my plant and I look and I see a lot of nice growth on the top. And then I see all this stretching and brown on the bottom. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna refresh this. I'm literally just gonna cut around this pot and remove all these stems so I can take a, a better look at it. And this pot is per it's pretty pot bound. So it's really difficult for me. You can see there's no soil coming out. So it tells me that the plant has a pretty decent root system. It's not overgrown. Um, it looks pretty good. I just watered this plant. It's not overgrown and so it looks really, really good. But sometimes what I do when the soil is fairly fresh on it and the plant has stretched a little bit is I will take my scissors, I'll make some holes on the top of the plant, and I'll take some of the nice, um, healthy portions of the, of the stems, and I will stick them in the hole so that they root and they start to grow. So that's one of the options that you can do. One of the other things that you can do, if, you're, if your plant is an older plant and it's really stretching and you feel like it just doesn't look like the life in it, is really going to come back if you do some trimming on it. The other thing that you can do is trim your plant up like I did here and then take all of the all of the colorful portions the, the, where the plants um, you know are still looking good, the stems, and you can start new. And that would be if you are familiar with doing cuttings, you can always take a look at my videos on how to take cuttings. Um, but you can just take your stems, I usually remove the bottom leaves and stick one of the joints or the nodes down underneath the soil line. And this is a six inch pot, so we will do about seven to nine sticks per pot. You could also do it in a four inch pot if you wanted to. And I just go through and take a look at all of the nice, good looking growth. And I fill my pot up and within two weeks time, the, the plant has started to root again and you're starting all over. That's really the fun of, of this plant. It really um, is so easy for you to just 
um, take new cuttings and start it fresh. But the other thing is too, is, is, is one of the things to keep in mind is for example, <clears throat> let's say you have this plant that's hanging. One of the things that people don't do on a regular basis with their trailing plants is they don't trim them often. And if you have a really good house plant book at your house, um, one of the things that they recommend is that for these types of plants that hang and trail is that you actually keep trimming on them. So what I usually do is as we are going through the greenhouse and walking and I take a look at my hanging baskets and I say, you're looking really good, I still don't leave it alone. I will come in and at various spots I will cut at various lengths because wherever you cut your plant you'll get two new shoots coming out. Keeps it nice and full. Don't forget about going into the top portion of the plant when you cut. You don't just cut from the bottom portion, but that you come up and you cut from the top as well. And then again, take a look if it's hanging, take a look at the top portion of your, of your pot. Make sure that everything up here looks nice and colorful or green if that's a green wandering Jew. Or you can take the cuttings that you did, and there's a lot of good space here. I can literally stick my finger in. You could take the new cuttings and stick them in there. So keep your um, wandering Jew in a, a brighter lit place in the winter. Keep the water going a little bit more so in the winter time. Fertilize maybe once every three months and you should have a, a plant that looks nice and healthy throughout the winter months without having any brown or shedding of your plant. Hopefully this helps. Thanks everyone. This is Mary at Bensell Greenhouse in Toledo, Ohio.